What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going through another collection that I acquired locally, this time from a guy named Derek. Got a lot of vintage baseball and football cards from the, some of them were from the mid to late 70s, going into the early 80s. Found a lot of cool vintage football cards that we'll go through in my gems box here in the front. I've already gone through once and took out all of the massively overproduced sets, like 1990 score, there was probably 10 to 15,000 uh, 1990 score and 1990 pro set. I love the Emma Smith uh, rookie card from pro set, and I like the, that set just because it's one of the first cards that I ever bought, but I don't think there's a, really a reason to keep. 10 to 15,000 of those, so those are probably going to the thrift store. And then what I have here on the table is either going to be forwarded out to one of you guys once I get an idea of what everybody collects. I've already got, I think, three or four team bags started. One for uh, Faith Family and Cards, one for Dave Durango, one for uh, SF Cards, and then I think I'm forgetting somebody carter's carter's kids uh so i got four bags started anybody else who is really hardcore collects a certain player or team now is the time to speak up uh you're gonna see that i've acquired a few different collections and my girlfriend's probably gonna kick me out soon unless uh <laughs> unless i can make some more space i'll, I'll show you uh what's behind me in the next video, uh, I'm in the basement and there's almost no room left. Like every nook and cranny is filled with cards. So we have to move these because we physically, if for lack of a better reason, we physically do not have room. So here, I'm going to open these up in a minute, but just to give you a preview, found a lot of cool Topps baseball cards that I don't have. Most of these are commons. I pulled all the gems out already. But still, I, I love the even the commons. The, of the vintage years, I didn't have, I don't think, any other than a few cards here and there. I didn't have any 70s cards, mid-70s, mid so now I have a bunch of 76, 77, 79. We'll take a look at that. I got a, uh, there was an 88 baseball set, so I paid a little bit more for this one. The collection that, that we're going to, that we looked at already from Kevin, that was mostly a donation. There was a little, that little box of treasures that that uh i paid up for but this one this collection in general I paid a little bit more for this one 87 tops baseball not my favorite set but there's two complete sets there and then there's a bunch in these bigger boxes we'll take a look at them a bunch of uh football and baseball cards that are close to complete sets that i'll probably work on completing so uh, and then there's another box behind me. So once we let's go through, we'll go through the the gems in that front box towards the end. Let's just go through these bigger boxes first. This is kind of cool, actually. Uncut sheet of 1980. 1980 tops. Nobody, nobody great here or anything, but it's kind of cool to see what they look like before they're cut. So no need to go through probably 88. You guys have probably seen a ton of 87 and 88. Not too interesting, in my opinion. I mean, 87. I collected as a kid, you know, it has the Bonds and the McGuire in it, but I've just seen it so much. It doesn't excite me as much as some of this other stuff. Gonna make some room here. So this first box uh, is mostly what I didn't pull out and put in the, uh, the gems box. So I separated them <clears throat> by year because I think it's I think it's fun to collect sets that I didn't really have access to as a kid. 
So what is this? <clears throat> this is 1978 tops. Football, obviously. There's a Mel Gray. I found some pretty surprising cards in the football box. We're going to go through the gems at the end. I'm not going to go through every single one of these. There's a whole row of football. Looks like there's like one, two, three, four. I think going from 78 all the way up to 82, which is pretty cool because I didn't have access to any of this stuff as a kid. Cards are in pretty good shape. You know, anytime you find vintage cards like this, they're not going to be, it's almost impossible to find them in perfect condition. Some of them were water damage and I had to throw those out, like, looks like, like, like I missed this one actually. I don't think this is actually water damaged, but it's pretty creased up. But yeah, some of them were actually pretty badly water damaged. So had to get rid of those, but look at this one. <laughs> Bob Tucker's not messing around, boy. Any of these cards, if you guys want any of these, just leave a comment below. Again, I can't send out like one, two cards at a time, but once you have enough for a team bag, I might ask you to pay for shipping the most. And then the rest of it's on me. So please leave comments below. I might do some of these like as I'm, you know, I, I thought, I presumed that you guys wouldn't be too interested in watching me go through 20,000 cards as I sort through them and find you know the gems but I don't know maybe you would be interested why don't you leave a comment down below would you like me to do actually do that live I mean I probably spent like four to six hours on this so I don't know how long you guys would want to watch a live stream of me going through unsorted cards but it could be fun so leave a comment down below do you guys want to see me go through uh, unsorted cards on a live stream and, and sort of discover the gems together. I mean, maybe it would be fun to do it for a couple of hours. Maybe I'll do like a late night one. I have a couple, actually one more acquisition to go through after this. So maybe as I go through that one, probably for flip books, it's a little bit easier, I think, to go through the flip books than it is to go through Cards and long boxes are like the one in front of me are pretty well organized, but and I generally like pay attention to that when I buy a collection. I like to see how the owner, you know, the pride of ownership. The uh, more organized it is, in my opinion, the more likely it is that you're going to find something that you like. Uh, so I don't usually buy collections with just like shoe boxes of cards and piles because I think that's a bad sign. But those are the most difficult to go through. This guy looks like he's sleeping here. What is this? This is 1976. So I think I went slightly. I wanted to go like all the way back chronologically, but that's okay. Larry Ball. There's only three of these. Is a cool uh, Broncos card. Man, I, I was just watching this uh, interview with Brett Favre where, you know, it's amazing to think that they haven't really learned about concussions in football until recently in terms of uh, diagnosing it when it happens and then taking the proper precautions. And Brett Favre was saying he he's... You know, now that he knows what a concussion is, he's probably had hundreds, maybe thousands of concussions. I mean, can you believe that? Like, these guys back in the 70s, uh, injuries were, I think, way more um, 
threatening to your, you know, long-term health. These cards, I love this design actually. That big football on the bottom left, with the bubbly letters. People are much more, uh, <laughs> much less scraggly uh, in terms of uh, facial hair, I've noticed. So just a 70s thing. Okay, so now we're into 77. Bobby Scott. Let's see if I can get the zoom better on this. Levi Johnson. These are really nice condition, actually. Jim Otis. Cleo Miller. I don't know any of these guys. I mean, I pulled out all the ones I knew already, but I don't think I, I don't think I missed any Hall of Famers. I don't know. It's just so much fun to discover cards, you know, like this out in the wild. Vintage cards are my jam, yo. Bronco, yeah, that's a punter. Anybody got that Eddie Murray rookie card? <laughs> oh man, I heard I heard punt rookie cards, uh, kicker rookie cards are making a comeback. No, just being sarcastic. Let's see, this is like 78, I want to say. Seventy-eight, yeah. Scott Hunter, Wilbur. I'm gonna start going through these a lot faster. Just so you guys can see what's here and let me know. If any of these are of interest to you. That one's kind of cool. Mod Rashad. You guys probably know him for his broadcasting career. Ahmad was formerly known as Bobby Moore. I did not know that. All right, let's just show a couple of cards from the other sets. So, one second. I actually don't know what set this is from. These, uh, these action shots, do you guys know what year this is from? Oh, it says 1978. I guess it's 1978 tops. It's a bunch of these. Miami Dolphins protective pocket. Pocket protector. That's actually snow. I kind of thought it was like white spots on the card actually, but it's not. Blocking the kick. New England Patriots clearing the way. I'm trying to get the lighting situation a little bit better down here. York Giants meeting of the minds. These are pretty cool. Bunch of these. Dallas Cowboys doomed today too. Let's 
So there's a bunch more of those, but I won't go through them all. Let's go on to the next year. Yeah, it took me a long time just to get these organized. They were mostly organized by year already, but went through each of them and put dividers in the box where the where the years transition. Okay, so now we're in, what year are we in now? I think we're in 19, 1980? 1980, so this is the year before Joe Montana's rookie year. I like this design a lot. I like all the 70s and 80s designs, pretty much. I mean, I like the newer cars, the shiny ones with all the insert par parallels and all that kind of stuff. Those are cool, but I kind of wish... I mean, I guess T Topps Archives kind of does the throwback thing. But I honestly wish more cards were just made on this simple... On these simple design principles. But that's why you see so much vintage on my channel and when we start... when we open the shop soon, it's we're going to be featuring mostly vintage cards and products and i mean that could change i guess zion williamson you know might help usher me into the uh, new age of card collecting and we actually have so you guys know hopefully we'll open up the shop in the next week or so but we have uh i think we have five, four or five boxes of different NBA cards where we can pull the Zion Williamson rookie. We have, I think, two two boxes of hoops coming, a box of uh, Don Russ, and then one other Panini one. I forget what it's called. I think it's certi called Certified or something like that. Mike Bragg. So I'm going to put those up for pre-sale in the shops as soon as we open up. I think the first box is going to ship out on October 23rd. So it should arrive like two or three days after that. And then we can start looking for some Zions. Matt Cavanaugh. Do you guys know any of these guys? Frank Le Master. He is it Le Master of the football. <laughs> Leroy Jones. Okay, so there's like probably, I don't know, another hundred or so of those from that year. And then there's like probably three or four hundred of, of these. Let's see. Yeah, this is uh, 82 now. Roger Carr. Well, there's a lot of those. The focus action here. Curtis Dickey. Zachary Dixon. Bunch of Colts. These are in order, actually. Oh, yeah, I remember now. These, these are already ordered. If you look at the numbers. 35... So these are already in the process of being, uh, whoever was collecting these was already trying to make sets out of them. The condition of this this group of cards is probably the best. Like I can, I can kind of tell just by feeling it, like it still has, if it still has its, uh, the integrity of the card. I don't know, sometimes I think, I think it depends on how the cards are stored, like if they're stored in a really humid place you can you can actually kind of feel it in the integrity of the card oh, I'm probably messing up the order I'll just check okay Curtis Brown anybody collect bills 
cards. This one I think would be a nice set to put together because the condition is so so good on this. This is a nice one. I could have put this aside, but I didn't. I don't know. I don't think he's in the Hall of Fame. It actually kind of bothers me the way that he calls games. He does the Sunday Night Football, right? I mean, he's he, he obviously knows football really well, but I don't know. He's not, not my favorite in terms of a broadcaster. I miss John Madden, personally. His obsession with Brett Favre. Let's go through... Let's go through one more pile of these. It smells like freshly engraved wood down here. Just got this little wood plank in the mail a couple days ago. So we got a bunch of browns here. This one, I think this, we probably almost have a complete set already. Ruben Carter, Steve Foley, there's, oh, I thought that was the other Jackson. Oh, that is the ESPN guy, Tom Jackson, right? I think it is. Leaders. Okay, I'm making you guys stick around for the, the most exciting part of this. Alright, yeah, there's probably 300 more or so more of those, but I'm not going to go through them. At least not yet, depending on if you guys really want to see the rest of them. Just let me know. Comments below. Alright, so in here we have all of the baseball sets that I didn't, cards that I didn't put to the side. So let me see if there's anything interesting here. This is all in the front row. This is all 89. Let me get the camera on this, actually. So this is all 89, 88. 88 Fleer. This is, oh, that's 88. Tops and this is 89. This a little 89 Fleer over there. Yeah, I don't think this is probably worth going through together. 87, more 87 tops here. Now oh, there's a Kirby Puckett. Eh, I'll leave it in there. If it was 85, I'd pull it out. So that's what's in here. I don't think that's worth going through. You guys have seen. Probably that hundreds of times. Oh, there's one more box of non gems to take a look at. Oh, this one's basketball. What do we have in here? Have some Fleer Flare. This is actually these are these cards are actually really nice. Fleer Flare Olympic cards. Probably almost a whole set of that from, I think this is the second Dream Team. Tim Hardaway, Dan Marley, this is Lonzo, Sean Kemp, Larry Johnson. Yeah, there's some cool basketball cards right here. And they'll be here off the top of my head. Some more vintage ones here. We'll go through those real quick. Some more Junk Wax Baseball over here, 86 Tops Baseball, 
A7 Fleer. 82. This whole section right here is 82. Don Ross. I didn't have any of these before. Danny Boone. How many Boone how many Boons are there that played baseball? This card is sharp. So that one is definitely worthy of making a set out of. Because the condition on those is pretty pristine. Those cards are awesome. I know that the early Don Ross was off was a lot of it was off centered, but I actually have a box of 81 Don Ross that uh, John Jabs inspired me to get after he pulled five Tim Raines rookies out of it. There's a Don Baylor, 78. This is all 78. So those are cool. I didn't have any of these before either. Let's take a look at some of those basketball together. Rudy Tomjanovich. Nice. Oh, what year is this? Let's look at that first. 78-79. Wow. Rick Barry. That one's really beat up. Otherwise, I probably would have put that aside. Here, let's start with this pile. Bob Lanier. These are really in really bad shape. Bill Walton. Somebody's going to want that, right? Wes Unseld. That one's a little, little bit better shape. George Gervin. Why are all the best the best ones, the best players are in really bad condition, unfortunately. That seemed to be only the case with the basketball. Mitch Kupchak. Caldwell Jones, George Johnson, Mike Green. There's the Rudy, the Rick Berry. I'll put those in the front. Checklist card. Tim Bassett. John Lucas. Kareem. Again, got a crease. That's okay, it's still a Kareem. Put that to the side. Paul Westpaul. Oh, there's the Bob Lanier. So there's some cool ones in there. Got a Kareem, a Bob Lanier. And a Rudy T and John Lucas. They're more, the, John Lucas and Rudy T are more known for coaching, I think. Where's the Rudy T? Oh, there's pa Paul Silas too, actually. Those are the guys I know. Oh, and Rick Barry. John Barry's dad. And the other Barry, Brent Barry. So those are pretty sweet. I think there were some hockey players I recognize too. Anybody collects hockey, let me know what to put aside here. I don't know anything about hockey. I don't know why this is all blacked out here. I don't think, think it, I think it's supposed to look like this, but I don't know how it turned into that. It's kind of weird. But this is a uh, 80. 81 hockey. Other than that black part right there, I still don't understand how that happened. It's like it's like carbon or something. Other than that, these are in good shape. I mean, that's a pretty big part of it. <laughs> but.
don't know any of these dudes. What's this? Oh, that's not a real signature. Dennis Hull? You related to Brent Hull? Yeah, I don't even... Since you can't even read the names, it's even harder to know who these guys are. There's a few players that I recognized here. I know this is pro set, but still, there's a Wayne Gretzky, Brett Hull, Patrick Waugh, Nedved, Jeremy Roenick, another Gretzky. There's just, this pro set was just printed way too many of them. Look how many Messies there are. There's some Joe Montana Upper Deck World Cup randomly thrown in there. Alright, what else should we look at here? Before I take you to the gems box. Oh, there was this uh, Eighty-three Fleer, almost in perfect condition. So I'm gonna make a set out of that. I mean, these are really, really sharp. Like, look at the corners on this. That's hard to find when you're buying really old collections. Yeah, this card is it's probably the best condition out of all the cards at 83 Fleer. Let's see, what else should I grab here? 85 Tops is in pretty good shape too, actually. There's an example of the 85 Tops. There's like probably 100 or so of those. Like, look at that. The centering on that's almost perfect. Really sharp. See, I mean, to me, condition is a big part of collecting, especially once you get familiar with certain sets. Then, you know, I kind of learned this from, from meditation, this whole concept that you can see the same thing over and over again. And it's easy to trick your mind. Your mind to, tricks you into thinking everything's the same. But if you actually look closely enough at anything, including your body, how it feels, like if you ever experience pain, you might think, oh, you know, my leg always hurts. But if you're paying enough attention, if you're really being aware and mindful, you'll notice that it's almost never exactly the same. And so the same thing applies to cards. Oh, this is probably worth putting aside. The same thing applies to cards. You know, when you really start paying attention, even the exact same card is never the same. You could have a hundred of them, and if you look closely and you're mindful enough, they're never actually the same. I mean, part of that is, you know, just me being detail-oriented. But that's, to me, that's a big part of the love of the game is really, you know, admiring each card for its uniqueness. Like, you may have 10 of these Dennis Eckersley 82 Donruss, but maybe some of them are better centered than other ones. I mean, that's really the whole concept behind grading. So, not like a foreign concept I'm, I'm introducing here, but this is like his sixth year card. So this is another group of cards that's really pristine. You can feel which card had the gum on it, but there wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of impact really from that particular piece of gum. Eighty two is Cal Ripken's rookie year, right? Lou Pinella. I did not find any Cal Ripken in here.
but again, the condition on this is certainly worthy of completing a set for it. There's a bunch more of that, which I'm going to skip over. Let's look at let's look at some of the 78 tops. So a lot, a lot of you guys probably already have you know memorized the designs, but for those of you who are just getting into collecting or refreshing your memory from your childhood years, this is a fun exercise just to help your identification skills. So this is 78 tops. I try to remember just like one or two key aspects from each design. So easy way to remember this is that 78's got the cursive writing in the bottom left with the different colored borders all around. Jim Bar. It's interesting like team cards are actually the really vintage years, like I was looking at somebody was selling locally a bunch of 55 and 56 tops and the price was just, I think it was too high so I didn't end up pulling the trigger on it. But it's interesting that the team cards, like they're listed in the comments section in Beckett, but they're like four to five times, so like I think 55 tops for example. A common is like five or six dollars, but the team cards are all like minimum twenty dollars, and that that was the low end of the book value. So team cards are pretty cool. I mean, not just because of the the value, but I mean they they go hand in hand, right? People a lot of people think they're cool, then it drives up demand, which drives up the value. But you know, I try to look at some of this stuff at this stuff objectively too. Like I thought they were team cards were cool even before that but then once I saw that I'm like oh yeah I'm not I'm not crazy other people like team cards too you guys like team cards let me know in the comments below wish I had my team card my team photo from high school baseball would be a good one to make a card out of Von Joshua you know what's crazy about one of these binders, there aren't any binders from this collection, but I think it was the collection that we're going to go through next. I found a Dion card, and on his sleeve, I don't know what the initials were there for, but it said JWM, which are my initials. I was like, huh, it's calling my name. Alright, one more stack of 78, and then we'll go look at the gems. I'm just, I like going through these even more than once, so this is even fun for me to just go back through them again. Another team card. We saw that one before. Remember when we had like two or three of those from the thrift store recovery? Okay, enough commons and semi-stars. Let's go look at the heat. Get ready for it. It's gonna blow your mind. This next one we got coming up, folks, is gonna blow your minds. So this is uh, early 90s. Probably at the height of my collecting as a kid. Penny Hardaway, Alonzo Mourning, Tony Kukoc. That one's for me because I'm a Bulls fan. Chris Webber, classic. I don't think classics really have a ton of value, but that's from the Fab Five years. A few more Chris Webbers. I don't need all these, so I'm willing to part with some of those. This one's really cool. It's like a clear card. I think it was an insert of some kind from 93, Penny Hardaway. There's the Chris Webber. I love this photo. It was a Chris Webber from that same classic set. 
Pennies, Chris Webbers. Let me get into some 90 hoops. I've seen a ton of this. David Robinson. I'm going to go through this part quickly. Sean Kemp. A bunch of David Robinson rookies. KJ. I didn't actually have this David Robinson before, surprisingly. I don't know what happened to all my 89 hoops from my, from my childhood. Probably in my mom's attic somewhere. More of the 89 hoops. This is overproduced as well, honestly. Oh, this was the one that I didn't have. David Robinson. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because it's, it's like way too much of that out there. A bunch of my boy, Dennis Rodman. 90 Skybox. Pippin. 90 Skyboxes. Also part of that. Just made too many of them. But I'm always going to love this card, the David Robinson rookie. And we got a few of those, right? Two, three, four, five of those. I think this card has got some decent value if it's graded and it grades out well. Here's the Jordans that I found. So these are both 90s hoops, Jordans. This is a 89 hoops. This one actually is, uh, I mean, any Jordan that grades out well is gonna be, is gonna have some value to it. But anything, like the cards before 90, they seem like they're, they're trending in value, trending up. This, this card is awesome. I actually didn't have this card, or if I do, it's at my mom's and I forgot about it. So this one was really nice to find. I'll take more of these any day, all day long. This photo is awesome. This is 40 bucks um, in a Jet Mint 10. I actually have one over there on the other table. I think I showed it on the live stream last week. So, uh, I think any Jordan card that grades out, uh, you know, between a 9 and a 10, I have a feeling those are going to appreciate in value over the years. There's a Shaq rookie. There's a bunch of Shaq rookies here. There's a classic rookie. I think this is one of the more iconic rookies. I haven't looked up the value yet, but I think this is one of the more well-known rookie cards. So, a bunch of Shaq rookies there. Let's go on to the next row. So let's get into the football gems a little bit. I'm gonna save the real heaters. I'm gonna save the real heaters for the very end. This is a nice Brett Favre action packed. 93 or 94, I wanna say. 93. The uh, Brett Favre action pack rookie is actually the most valuable of all the Brett Favre cards, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't see a lot of the action-packed cards out in the wild, so I'm going to track down a box of the 91 action-packed. I really like the texture on these, it's just, I don't know, makes makes me feel calm just, just like going through these. I mean, all cards do, but especially these. I don't know what it is about these. I vaguely remember these at the time, and I didn't like them as a kid, but... We're, we're get, we gotta hunt down that Brett Favre action pack rookie. LT, even though he's on the Giants and I like the Cowboys, I mean, the guy was just incredible to watch. Arguably the greatest football player of all time. I mean, I think you could make that argument. I think a lot of people do. So we have a, let's get our focus here. Focus. Brett Favre. 94 Collector's Edge. I don't think this is a perceived as a high quality product. I don't know. I'm, I don't, to be honest, I don't know anything about Collector's Edge. 
Excalibur, but seems like it's a low end product. Could be wrong. There's a nice Dion. Two of those. Marshall Falk. This is actually a Marshall Falk rookie, I think. Technically. So that's pretty baller. I don't know why that's not in sleeve, actually. Now it is. And I don't know what... Oh, this is classic. So, I don't think classic rookies are really as collectible as regular rookies, just because they're usually college or minor league, and then they're all rookies. But, still, it's cool to have a Marshall Falk rookie. Nice Williams, very highly underrated cornerback in my opinion. This is actually an insert card. Rookie Sensations. I'll go back through these and put, I think I plan to put all these in sleeves. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. These are also insert cards from the 92 Fleer set. Yeah. So, I don't remember what the odds are on this, but Andre Risen. Forgot he went to Michigan State. Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders, and Michael Irvin. All right, these I can't wait to put those in sleeves. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, we'll just do those two for now. Definitely the Barry Sanders needed a sleeve. The Michael Irvin's already kind of white in the corner. Well, that's a cool Barry Sanders. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start heating up here. So let me go through this stack real quick. This is your massively overproduced 90 score and 90 Fleer, but still really cool to me. Around my heyday, Michael Irvin. So we got a ton of Michael Irvin, Jerry Rice, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice and Joe Montana, Michael Irvin, Bo Jackson, Steve Young. There's a couple of Barry Bonds in 91 Upper Deck, and a bow at the back. Just wanted to get through those quickly. Oh yeah, and this. See how easy it was to pull uh, Hall of Famers out of the 90 score. This is all score and pro set. All of these are Barry, Bo, Dion, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice. Pretty much the same players we just went through, so I'm going to skip over that. Okay, now we're getting into what we've been waiting for here. So we got Craig Biggio, Topps rookie. We got two Edmund Smith 90s Pro Set rookies. They don't look like 10s. Those are going for like, relief around 40 bucks. Let's see that white in the top right. So that'll prevent it from being a 10, but pretty close. This one would have had a chance, but it's a little white around the edges. I mean, you really got to start nitpicking the details to get even in the vicinity of 10. Barry Sanders, 89. Pro set rookie. This is one of my favorite cards. Just favorite football cards. I can't really, it's too many of my favorite early baseball cards to really for this to rank in the overall ranking but for football I just love this photograph I love the 89 design and again there's too many of these out there but to me this is a card that has a special special value so we got three of those 
see, we already looked at this score. I didn't know this player, but this was actually listed book value wise. And I feel like I should know him. Calvin Hill, I think I've heard the um, the guys at DallasCowboys.com talking about this guy on their podcast, telling telling old stories and whatnot. So now I have a face to put to the name. Oh, interesting. So this is 73 Tops Football. That looks like they had some sort of game here at the bottom. It says Calvin... Amazing. It says Calvin works in the steel industry off-season. So, it shows you how long the... Uh, how far we've come with uh, pro football compensation. I don't think you're going to be seeing anybody working at the steel mills in the offseason these days. Some 88 Mark McGuire's, 88 Bo Jackson. Throw that on the sleeve real quick. Got a Smoltzy rookie. 89 John Smoltz tops. There's three of those. Let's see which one's in the best condition. This one is. Oh, if it wasn't for that printing bubble, it might have been. Oh, and the corner's a little bit dinged up. These are close. These would probably get nines, I think. And pretty soon here, I'm going to be spending a lot of time getting a grading submission ready. This is a Gary Sheffield rookie, Sandy Alomar, Michael Guire, Craig Biggio rookie, Tim Raines rookie, your second year card, second year card. Robin Yant, 1980. Larry Larkin, David Cohn, Rafael Palmero, rookie. There's a Dirk Jeter card that I didn't have before. Reggie Jackson, 1980. Uh, Mike Schmidt. I forget what year this is. 81. 82. This is 82, right? Because this is the Cal Ripken rookie year. 82, George Brett, Don Ross, Mark McGuire. This card's messed up. It's got some, like holes in it, but it's got Juan Marichal and Sandy Koufax on it. This one is a Dale Murphy rookie card. Jack Morris rookie card. Should probably put this in a top loader. Jack Morris rookie card. Let's see. Beat up Yankees team card. This is seventy eight. This is a nice uh, 70, 78 with Nolan Ryan and Phil Necro. Strikeout leaders. Thurman Munson in the Hall of Fame. Still 78. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to remember the cursive in the bottom left is 78. And Dan Marino, John Elway. And we got three art monks here. This is a 82 
So this is his third year or second year card, depending on how you look at it. Third year in the league, second year card. So I think you could say second year card for this Art Monk. This one's probably the one that's in the best shape. Oh yeah, it's got a little bit of printing issue right there. And the back looks pretty good. Corner's a little bit, a little bit dinged. So, I don't know, probably would get like a seven and a half, or maybe a seven because of that. Maybe even lower than that. I don't know, it'll be good to test that out and see how close I am on some of these guesses. This is a uh, 1980 Roger Staubach and Dan Fouts. Got a Jack Lambert. Hall of Famer, I believe. Franco Harris. Another Steelers. Hall of Famer, Reggie Williams. This one was listed in the book, that's why I pulled it out. Uh, Walter Payton's on this card. So this is uh, 78 Tops Football. I think we looked at some of the commons. Dan Fouts, Joe Washington, Archie Griffin, Mike Webster, Lance Allworth, one of the all-time great Cowboys tight ends, I believe. Yeah, this is his rookie card. Maybe he wasn't an all-time great, actually. This is just... A rookie card. Looks like you did pretty well in college though. That's San Diego. I think I've heard of him before though, so he might might have had a pretty good career with the Cowboys. Okay. And for the grand finale, let me just get organized here. not be disappointed. Oh, my OCD really kicks in when I'm organizing cards. Okay. These are the real heaters, guys. Look at that. This needs its own own shot. Lawrence Taylor rookie card. This is like one of the holy grails of football cards. So it's uh, 1982, the year after Joe Montana's rookie year. And it's pretty good. It's got some of that printing transfer stuff right here. But very minor issue, a little bit right there. And the back is pretty nice, so this is a really nice car. I didn't know that he went to North Carolina. Hmm. So this is a really nice copy of the Lawrence Taylor rookie card. This next one, I actually had one of these as a kid, but it had a crease in it. Ronnie Lott rookie card from the same year. Can't believe those two guys came out in the same year. Oh, times two. This one is really nice. The centering, the centering's on, on this one's a little bit better than this one. This one's like, I don't know, 30, 70. But, man, the rest of it is really sharp. I don't see any printing bubbles. This is a really nice one right here. Ronnie Lott rookie card. Then we got a Phil Sims rookie card. 1980. 
Not as great a shape as the Ronnie Lot, but still pretty decent considering how old it is. Corner's a little dinged up. Tony Dorsett, not a rookie, but from the same year. So it's his third year card. Or fourth year card. Am I counting that right? Yeah, that the second, third, yeah, fourth year card. Tony Dorsett, that's sweet. Probably gonna keep that one, being the Cowboys fan that I am. Then we got a Joe Montana. This is from the same year as the Lawrence Taylor rookie. Joe Montana in action card. Lawrence Taylor in action card. So this is also considered a Lawrence Taylor rookie. It's not as valuable as the, the base, the regular base card. But the corners are really sharp, probably 70, 30 again, or maybe, maybe 60, 40, left to right. Heaters. We got the Walter Payton. Like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, like eighth year card. I didn't realize his rookie year was 1975. So his rookie card would be 1976. But still, I have not had a Walter Payton card up until this point. Then we got the uh, 83 rookie class, or at least two of the three main guys. Got the Ryan Sandberg and the Wade Boggs, both rookie cards. This is from that uh, stack that was in really good condition. So these are really sharp. It's amazing how hard, it, it's almost impossible to find a 10. Um, I mean, it's almost always the centering going to be the issue but if it's not that it's usually something else centering on this is probably 60 40 um, if it was 50 50 it probably would be a 10 I don't see anything else wrong with this one then we got the Nolan Ryan 82 tops we got the Nolan Ryan 82 Donruss. Oops, that was a little off camera. Nolan Ryan 82 Tops. Love my Nolan Ryan cards. Nolan Ryan 82 Donruss. These are the cards that made made the acquisition worth it. 82 Ricky Henderson card. So this is his. Fourth year card. First rookie. First second. Sorry, right, second. Wait, am I counting these wrong? 79 was his rookie year, but his rookie card was 80. So on the 80 card, you would see 79. So this is his. So I think he basically just add one or subtract one from the number of years so if you have three years then it's his second year card Then we got a Ricky Henderson, 1980, this is also 1982. Then we got a Ricky Henderson, really nice, 82 tops, so this is his third year card. Yeah, I think I might have been overthinking that earlier, I think. So 79 was his rookie year, but 80 was his rookie card. 
So I think if you're going to say second and third year card, you just count the number of years I had stats. So this is one, two, three. So this is his third year card. Then we have a Paul Molitor, a rookie. 78 rookie class was pretty good, huh? Paul Molitor and Alan Trammell rookie card here. We're still going. We got Lou Whitaker rookie card. So the Tigers got a pretty good haul that year. This is a 79 Nolan Ryan. Pretty decent shape, except for that in the bottom left. Look at that, guys. I saved the best for towards the end. This is probably, other than Lawrence Taylor, this is probably the best card. Eddie Murray, rookie. 1978. Did not have this one before. Beautiful card. We have a 1976 Nolan Ryan. Love this card too. It's going to be fourth year card. I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. Roy Seaver Seavers. This is a super vintage card, 1959. got a uh, Babe Ruth tribute card from oh it's not really from 1935 it's just his last year's stats 1976 Babe Ruth tribute card then we have a Bruce Sutter and I believe Bruce Sutter is in the Hall of Fame right and a Willie McCovey definitely in the Hall of Fame 1977 Willie McCovey. So these two are probably going to be the highlights for me. We got the Eddie Murray rookie and the Lawrence Taylor rookie. These two cards made it totally worth it for me. I didn't have either of them before. So as always, this was a ton of fun. You guys know I love finding cards out in the wild, especially at thrift stores or acquiring collections. It's just so gratifying to find the gems or the diamonds in the rough so to speak. So I hope you guys like this video as much as me. If you did, go ahead and give it a huge thumbs up below. Keep watching the channel, please. We got a ton of good content here. Got one video for you right here, another one for you right here. Smash that subscribe button, help us get to 200 subscribers, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.